Let's check out some other things we can do with our layers. I said that there's these thumbnails here that will let us kind of preview what is on each layer. Here's the blue layer, the red layer. We can also, if we want to, name these layers. For example, if I was doing my uh, colors here, I just double click and I could call this colors or whatever, whatever to describe it and help me remember it and then hit return or enter. I have a tendency not to do this because I know kind of how I structure my my uh, layers, so it's kind of a waste of time for me to go in here and add labels for each one. But if it is something that you need to do to keep it clear, especially when you're getting started with these, go ahead, definitely. I have I only do it when I have like a really complicated um, use of my layers. If I'm breaking panels or something and in a way that's kind of unorthodox, but in general, I, I know how my things are set up. And I can always, if I'm unsure what is on a layer, I can just say, oh, the one that's disappearing, the red layer. Because sometimes it's gonna be more complicated than just a big st stripe of red. It may just be these tiny little, uh, very nuanced sh shading or something. In addition to naming these or renaming them, you can also get, uh, like assign each of them a color. If, for example, I was, doing all the shading on different, uh, like in different folders. If I want to make all the shading like one color, I can click on it, let's say it was this red, and go right here to change palette color, and then you can assign it a color. So if I wanted to make it all yellow, it would just have that layer be yellow, and I could do that with uh, any other layers that I wanted. This is just kind of a another system for organ organizing your layers. Now, in addition to turning a layer off and on completely, you can also just affect its transparency by going up here. Right now it's at 100. If I turn it down, you can see it starts to fade out until it's gone. So transparency, making adjustments to it is going to be very useful, I think you'll find. You can also move your layers around as, you, as we saw earlier, and you'll definitely want to play with this. And this is also useful when we, let's say we're copying an image and we need to move it to another panel, we're going to have to move it. So it's not just about necessarily where it's at, it's where it needs to be in terms of our panels. We're going to look later on in panels at how we can organize our layers into groups of panels, but for now this is um, just showing you how these work in general. You can also put groups of layers into folders let me show you that. So let me create a bunch of more layers. I'm just gonna click. So I have layers, uh, these colors, uh, just different names. They're all they're all kind of in a mess here. Let's say I wanted to put these three folder, these three layers right here into one folder. Well, I could create that folder first, and it's right here on the menu, new layer folder. Click it, and this layer, will, this uh, folder will pop up. And right now it's. Uh, if I click this arrow, there's nothing in it. It's empty. But if I, I wanted to put these three in it, I just need to press press down on control and tap on each of them so they're all highlighted and drag it up until you see this red line. And that means that they are in that folder now. And let go. So now when I press this, it closes or opens because they're all organized together. So this is, I don't use these too often, but some, I know some artists definitely do use these and uh, probably colors might use these a lot just to keep things separate and clear. So you might have a, a layer with just your pencils, a layer with just your inks, and a layer with just your colors, for example. There's a lot of other things up here on the layer um, window that we can use that I'm gonna describe later. So these combination modes, um, clipping, layer mask, and so on. I'll talk about it later. The only other thing I want to talk about is the this lock right here. And so we have this blue layer right here. And if I want to make it so that I cannot do anything to it and I can't accidentally, you know, erase something, if I want to just lock it so it's it's going to stay the same and I can work on other layers, I can just click on that lock and it'll appear on there. And basically now I can't do anything to it. So if I try and even take a pen and draw here, it's going to give me that no sign to say, no, you can't do that. It's locked. So anytime you see that, um, that, that no thing that says 
that you can't work on this layer. That means it's either going to be locked or it could mean that if the eyeball is off because if I turn it back on, it's still not going to let me do it because it hasn't been activated. So now I can see it and now it'll let me draw on it. And then if I ever want to just delete a layer altogether, not, not just make it disappear, but actually like destroy it, I can uh, just either click on the trash can when it's, the layer is highlighted. So if I want to just delete it, it'll say, do you want to delete it and delete it and it's gone. Or I could right click over it or I have my uh, mouse, I mean my uh, pen button is going to be my right click and I can delete. Uh, where is it? Delete layer. Or I have other options. I could also just drag it down to the trash as we did earlier. Let it go. So those are some different options for deleting a layer. But a lot of times if you, even if you think you may not use like a sketch layer again later, it makes more sense a lot of the times just to turn the eyeball off and leave it there. Because when you actually export this into a file or print it, that actually will not show up. So the only things that are going to print or show up are the things that you have actually activated.